Okay, ladies and gentlemen, my next guest is Professor David. Um, he's actually a research professor at the University of Utah. He's uh, also a structural biologist. It's someone that studies the structural, the structural biology, biological uh, organisms. His specialty is viruses. Super interesting guy. We're playing in his laboratory. Thank you very much for that, sir. You're welcome. How you doing today? Fine, thank you. Good. Great to be here. Yeah, here with yeah. You. thank, thank you. you. Uh, tell me a little more about what you guys do here exactly. So um, I direct a lab that's uh, one of what we call here at the university a core facility. And the core facilities are meant to specialize in particular techniques that are expensive, often expensive, and not... and, and and they're allowed, and we have these so that lots of people on campus can use them or elsewhere can use them. And my specialty is the electron microscope. And so we have several electron microscopes that we, we have available, and people here at the University of Utah and outside use them to, to study biolo mostly biological, biological things. Nice. And your specialty is viruses. My specialty is viruses, but we image uh, lots of other different things as well. Cells, tissues, okay. um, proteins, lots okay. of things. So I was going to ask you this question in your lab. Actually, I did. Um, why do people associate viruses and just being bad? Because you told me that there's viruses that also do good things. You could modify them or there just is. Yeah, so people are, are actually interested in using viruses as a, a kind of nanotechnology, for, one, for example. So... Viruses package things, so they package. Viruses are are a, um, an entity, a biological entity that packages a DNA or a nucleic acid of some kind, genetic information. They package that inside, and people are using the way the the packaging works to to think about mail. How we can how we could pack pa package small, really small stuff, and use it for medicines or other things. I think even there are probably some people even thinking about it for, for computers, mm -hmm. and so yeah, that's one one possible. Um, would that be like thing. nanotechnology? In yes, sense? yes, okay, got Nan it, got nanotechnology. It. So, but why would they like? I mean, if someone says, "Oh, wear a jacket, you're going to get cold," um, there you might get a virus. Why do they automatically assume that it's bad? Like when when you say the word virus, there's like a negative connotation to it. Yeah, yeah. Well, throughout history, that's that's yeah, what's that's been what that's what's what's happened. I mean, we think of viruses and we think of being sick, or we think of coronavirus, yeah, right? That we yeah. the pandemic we just been through. Yeah. So, yeah, normally, the, the general thing that people think about when they hear viruses is it uh, something that's bad and it's going to make me sick. But there probably are some that that actually help us. I mean, there's certainly part of our microbiome in our guts uh there there we have billions of bacteria inside of our our guts that are important and help important in 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 that then that micro environment in that environment and um probably other functions that we have i, I know of a one one virus that um we get usually the uh, one called polyoma viruses that probably most of nobody probably everyone probably very few people have actually ever heard of and we get them when we're young. And apparently most, most human beings have these, and they don't seem to be a problem unless your immune system is suppressed. So people with AIDS or people that have transplant organs and have, are on immunosuppressant drugs can have problems with these viruses. But what are they doing there? They're apparently in our kidneys and, and shedding virus every now and then, but I guess we don't know. Uh, you said something earlier that was like really interesting. You said viruses are in, uh, uh, around us. They're, they're with us, like yeah. in us. Yeah. So, so that makes perfect sense because yeah. we all have like gut bio, which is viruses, right. and they're good ones. And like I said, I took uh, probiotics earlier today just to you know refuel. Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely. It's just part of the world around us. And and then uh, so what you do ideally is he showed me in the laboratory. He has some really fancy technology. It was really cool. Um, you guys freeze the virus, right? Like it's called cryo cryogenic state. That you yeah. put it in the cryogenic state, yeah. and then uh, they just uh, preserve it, and then they just analyze it to see what it does, how it does it. Can you elaborate on that a little more? Sure. So so um, viruses go through stages. So they have a cycle um, and an infection cycle, and they they get inside of a cell. The, a virus is, is something we, we don't really think of them as living. They're not really living in the sense uh, of, of, of cells. But what they do is when they get inside a cell, they kind of are alive because they 
transform the cell into a virus factory. Are they are they like dormant when? Uh, yes. They're dormant when. They're dormant they're outside of the cell. And then they're alive and thriving when they're inside. Kind of, of the yeah. Cell. You can think of them as kind of alive and thriving when they're in the cell because they take control of the cell. They have genetic information that they can pass on to progeny, but. Some one of my colleagues refers to has referred to them as chemical with a life cycle, um, so they're really more of a they they can't move on their own they they are passive they they just drift from from cell to cell and when they encounter a cell they can get into the cell and cause the cell to turn into a virus factory and 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 maybe cause an immune response in the in that host organism of a whole. So, for example, people who got coronavirus would would often get they'd get a quite a an immune reaction that could actually be quite severe. The fevers and Bedtime. The, Bedtime. right, right. So but some people it would just didn't even affect them. They had it, they didn't know. So it just affects people differently. True. That's right. That's right. Okay. Right. So right. let me ask you this. Now I'm thinking uh, you're saying it's dormant, um, the virus by itself, and it gets into a cell. What gives it that life? Is it the energy? Is it like uh, the fact that it's eating its nutrients? It's poisoning its host? No, it's it 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 actually just. Um, you want to just to go ahead? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Boom. We're good. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> no, the virus. So so for example, in a human being, so a virus has to interact with the outside of a cell. So when it interacts with the outside of a cell, there's something on the outside of the cell that. Um, a, usually a protein of some kind that it interacts with. And that particular interaction causes the cell to bring the virus inside inside it. And then it will strip strip out the, the gene and deliver that gene into a particular place in the cell. And then in, as part of this process, it actually can will turn the cell into a virus factory and start making more viruses. So it multiplies itself. Multiplies itself. Yeah. Okay, I'm yeah. just trying to put it in yeah. an elementary term. But yeah. 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 You have a PhD, I don't. <laughs> so, well, and um, and so what we're trying to do is it, one of the things we do with the electron microscope is try to understand how this virus, how viruses work. And so you can take these different stages. Sometimes you can trap them in different stages. And sometimes if you treat them chemically or somehow you can actually change their change um, how, how they look or how they, how, what, what, what shape they're in. And then we can look at them in the electron microscope and study that and see, see what it's like. Nice. Um, and so we can use the microscope and, and we, you mentioned this cryotechnique. So we, um, samples in our, in our electron microscope have to be a solid. And if we want them to stay in the shape that they're normally in, the native shape we call it, we freeze them. We freeze them and keep them as a frozen block, and then we can image that in the microscope. Got it. Um, can you create a virus out of nothing, or do you have to modify it if you wanted to do something that you want to do, whether it's good or malicious intent? Well, I mean, I guess theoretically, uh, you know, you, you, but, but that doesn't really you happen. could no. I th it, most what people would do is start with something. Start yeah. with something, yeah. and then yeah, change I mean, it. Yeah, I guess if you if you had your imagination, maybe maybe there's a way to come up with something. But no, mo the experiments that people do are are usually to modify viruses in some way, sometimes just to see what that would do. Um, okay, got yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, I have been involved in an experiment where um, one lab here at the University of Utah, where the idea is if we could understand, if we could engineer a virus kind of thing, we could that'll help us understand how they work better. Like and reverse engineering in a sense? So, kind of, yeah, kind of. And so so th they've taken um, a small uh, um, a, a protein that, that's involved in something else besides viruses and actually had uh, worked with a protein engineering group um, from the University of Washington and been able to make little kind of like cages simul simulating a virus and and gotten cells to to package those like kind of like a virus works and actually have them expressed out of cells but it's not infect it's not uh, not infecting people or anything like that okay. but but anyway th they're trying to understand how viruses work and so yeah so in that sense they've actually kind of engineered it to, to, to do some of the functions that viruses do okay. to try to understand them better. Got it. And yeah. um, as far as viruses go and time, um, I don't know. I mean, I mean, you've probably done some experiments or read about them. Um, are they more harmful to viruses as time goes on? Or are they like 
not as harmful. Like if you just leave the virus by itself, I'm guessing it will die down slowly, right? Versus if it's a ho- infected a host. Yeah, if you left the virus by itself, it will yes, it will die away. It will it will actually be um, disintegrate. Just like like if you um, if you leave anything food or anything outside, right? It yeah. de- it it degrades, and so viruses would do the same. If they're not if they don't in- encounter a host cell within a certain amount of time, the virus will will disintegrate and 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 just be broken up and broken up and used by something else to okay got it yeah got it yeah it. that's what i was just curious but i just yeah. thought about that right now yeah um i was asking you so some viruses do better in cold environment and some do better in warmer environment can you elaborate on the fetish story that yeah was yeah yeah so so um yeah so viruses are adapted to their to their environments and as i was explaining to you earlier it, it seemed as far as we can tell every living thing has viruses. So you can look at bacteria, humans, animals, plants, everything, fungi, everything has viruses that can infect it as far as we can tell. And um, so one of the most amazing examples is of life is, is life that can live in, live in extreme environments, like, for example, those organisms that live in the hot springs of Yellowstone National Park and other similar environments around the world. So it's the water is um, hot, it's acidic. Um, you, yeah, you you jump yeah. in and you're dead, right? Yeah, the, you're definitely dead. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've, yeah I've, I've seen it. It's like boiling hot. Right. It's, it's, it's lava. It's, it's sitting on top of a volcano. Right. So it's very, very hot. Right. Um, and not too many things to survive. But there's some viruses that your friend found or a colleague. Yeah, yeah. So I have, I have colleagues that, um, that are studying those viruses that, from those hot springs. And in one case, they, they sent it by FedEx down to, to San Diego. And it got lost by for, plane, right? Uh, yeah, by yeah, plane. By plane. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. Usually, when we ship samples to each other to other labs, and when I receive them, it's on. Uh, yeah, by FedEx or or UPS or something like that. Anyway, we um, they would ship them to 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 San Diego, and they got lost. I guess they got lost for about a week. And so, this virus can survive in acidic, uh, hot water, but it couldn't survive on a FedEx truck at, I guess, normal temperatures mm-hmm. that, that you and I are used to. So apparently something happened to it. We don't know, I don't know exactly what. But, but anyway, in that week that it was in the FedEx truck, it, it, the, the virus disintegrated when, the, when it finally, the, okay. the, the shipment was finally delivered. But, but they can exist in this very hot water. So, yeah, viruses can, are adapted. They're, they're adapted for their environment, the environment that they're in. And, um, and, they, and they, they appear, they really appear to be an extremely important part of the environment. Um, there, another colleague has investigated, was, has investigated the viruses in the ocean and, and uh, estimates there's just, uh, I don't know, uh, in, in scientific terms, we say 10 to the 30th. I mean, that's 10 with, uh, you know, one with 30 zeros behind it, uh, you know, viruses in the ocean. Uh, and, and just so, and they they appear to play a very important role in in um, the bacterial bacteria that live in the ocean. That's a okay. very important part of 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 that ecosystem. So okay, so Got it. is there viruses in outer space? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Not that you're in a okay. not that I'm aware, of, but but presumably, you know, if we have organic matter of that that comes in from, or I guess one of the one of the ideas is that that life maybe came to be on earth came came on earth arrived on earth through an asteroid or something yeah. like that then yeah there was probably viruses with it okay yeah. got yeah. it so do you want to jump into religion and viruses with that that oh, was a good angle um, <laughs> well um i i personally um uh, uh, have 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 a belief in god and yeah. uh, and i have been bothered for many years about the creation evolution uh, controversy um and it seems to me that the, a lot of, of people, at least on the extremes, um, are really trying to prove that God exists through scientific means. I mean, it's like... That God exists or, or doesn't exist? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, 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 I think the crux of it comes down to people that um, try to say that, that God created the world in, in a certain way, uh-huh. a, literal, a literal interpretation of the, of, uh, the Bible. Um, 
are trying to prove that it happened one way and and they're they they f they feel it's very important that it proved that it happened in you know the six day time frame and and then you have other people that say no no it was a completely accidental and and it seems like th what they're really trying to prove is that they're trying to prove that there's no god and so it seems to me that that's kind of the crux of the whole matter is that people are trying to prove that there's a god or prove that there isn't a god and in my view that that's not something you can prove with science yeah i can't prove that so um, what what question do you ask? What question do you ask that can be that I can go and measure? That I can, in science we have to measure stuff. That's the deal, the right? You have to be, be able to measure it. You have to be able to observe it physically. Um, and if you can't, if if that can't be done physically and reproducibly, or um, then 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 that's really a question outside of science. Got it. Um, so. That's kind of my view. Is that I think that um, I think that that's really something that that really it's touchy. It, it's touchy. <laughs> well, it's yeah, it, and, that. and in my view, um, uh, I I see that I see that the evolution is really evolution is a is a method. It's a method. So it's a mechanism. So right. So you have. So the idea is that some primitive life uh, was was on Earth. There are random changes that have occurred, but then there's selection. So the the idea of evolution is that you make random changes in something, and then you have some kind of a selection afterwards. And in, and in my my study of of things, that you find people that are using that as an engineering principle. You can do this in the computer. You can you can um, set up a computer experiment to, uh, and people have done this to, to select certain thing. You want to select a certain function, and in the computer you, you set it up. And people have used this in engineering to make things. Um, people use this principle of random have some random answer. We use it in my field of of, of electron microscopy. You throw in random. Um, possibilities, and then you, but then you have a selection afterwards, and you go through an, usually an iterative process. So it's not just um, it's not like we're having an explosion in a print shop and come out with a dictionary. That's not what we get. Okay, that's not it. What what you have is you have uh, something you start with, then you make random changes, and then you have some kind of a selection to it. And that's a powerful way in mathematics to solve very complicated problems. Um, our bodies use it. For example, every day our bodies um, make thousands and thousands of uh, new antibodies. Yeah, they make like cells that shed, can make. We shed skin too, and all that, and just we shed skin. It. Sure, but but inside our, our immune system, our oh, immune okay. system, one of the really f amazing things that happens in our bodies is that every day we we make. Um, I think it's 50 million new antibody making cells. Okay, these these can make unique. These each one of them is unique. They make a unique antibody because our bodies have no idea what pathogen we're going to see tomorrow. We're not. We have no idea. And so what happens is it's random. It's a random thing. It makes randomly different 50 million. Some anyway. Some millions really? millions of of new antibodies every day. And then, if that antibody interacts with a pathogen, then it's kept. The body keeps it. If it doesn't, it throws it away. It's destroyed. And because, uh, and so, and then the next day, you know, this keeps just happening every day, all the time. This is happening nice. all the time in us. And so that's a random process, but it has a selection afterwards. And it's a brilliant way. What a brilliant way. How, how else could you um, come up with a way to defend the defend yourself against pathogens that you have no idea what you're going to see tomorrow. Nice. So anyway, to me, that's another example of a, of this evolution process where you've got random changes and a selection mechanism that where it's doing something constructive. Got so it. in my view, uh, a super intelligent being could have used that same process. It, if, if we, if engineers can use it, if mathematicians can use it, if we can use it in cryo -EM, are uh, in my in my cryogenic electron microscopy if um 
and, and our bodies use it in, in, in making antibodies, why couldn't a super intelligent being have used that to make life on Earth? And so that's my view in, in terms of... Nice. That and that's my personal view. Yeah, right. That reminds me of uh, Tom Cruise's movie uh, where aliens attack Earth and there's like a world war. I don't uh -huh. know if you've seen that. I don't I remember the name. Anyways, and they die after a few weeks. Like they're like destroying humanity with their advanced technology, but they don't have the immune system built up to fight all the viruses on planet Earth. Yeah. So they just die off in a few weeks. So, so that, yeah. yeah. Right. So we have, right. if you're saying we have 50 million antibodies every day new ones These new ones new no new ones. oh so they don't like recycle no no so so they die off they'll, they'll they'll die off if they're not used if they're not selected for okay then they're selected against they they die they, they die off do you think these people are affected if uh they're sick or overworked if they're stressed um, or they're depressed sure i think that I mean there are other factors that can involve how how our bodies get whether or whether, whether you know the the degree to which we we get sick. Yeah. We get ill from something. And okay. Right. People that um, are healthier or exercise more or eat healthier w will have a better response to illness in general mm -hmm. than those who don't. And and those factors, I'm not sure exactly how those play in. But but, but they definitely do play. Like the healthier you are, the better off you're going to be able to fight. Sure. External factor. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Got it. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. Okay. Yeah. Right on. Yeah. Because... Uh, because I talk to a lot of different people, scientists in general, and some of them are just like, they're they're against intelligent design, like something higher than us created us. And I'm like, why would you just shun that away? And so I like to pick people's brains about it. Well, let like, me let me make a distinction between intelligent design and what I'm arguing for. So intelligent design has come to mean um, the idea that things are so complex that they could not have evolved. Okay, that's what that's what when 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 a when a scientist like myself hears the the terms intelligent design, mm -hmm. that's what they think of, and I'm not I'm not in favor of that idea because okay. it because there are cases that have been shown that where, um, like for example, the intelligent one of the things that intelligence design movement has tried to argue is that some things like the eye are so complex that it just couldn't have been happened through evolution, but other other scientists have shown that yes, indeed it could. You had, could have very simple, a simple um, cell uh, self uh, surface of cells that that are sensitive to light, and that that could have evolved into to the a light to, to the eye that we have today. Oh. So so that's what I mean by intelligent design. But but if you're saying, do I believe in a, that a super intelligent be being created us? Yes, I do believe that. God, yeah, you but, can say that. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but let me also d say this too: is that for me, the evidence of a that that God created us is not from not from science, but it comes from faith. the faith, my faith, and it comes from the scriptures that I believe are the, that perfect. I believe are true. Perfect. Hey, yeah. we're in America, and you have a yeah. right to do that. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah. And those people that say otherwise, I say, how did we develop a consciousness? Because no one could explain that. No one. Right. I talked to a lot of different people. You can explain the material and the uh, the matter, but you can't explain consciousness. Yeah. Well, how do we develop that? I uh, just have no boop. But it's also, I think, important too to to say that just because we understand something doesn't mean that that's proof that God exists. Um, again, so some people have tried to use that argument that okay, just because we can't we can't explain something. Then that that's we we substitute God in there, kind of the God of the gaps God, argument. That's what it's called. Yeah, yeah the, God of the gaps. Very interesting. Um, and and I think that that's a dangerous argument because many things have been shown to be explainable, and just because they're explainable doesn't mean, in my view, that there there's not a God. So, okay. yeah. Got it. Okay. So let's circle back to viruses. <laughs> what what causes a virus to be bad versus good for a person? What's like the trait there? What's like? Well, I think it depends on how our body reacts to it. Okay. Right. So, in the coronavirus case, so people um, who who got it and then um, had such a, a as a, it appears, I think, from what I've, I think of what, what I understand is that it their their the immune system reaction, their body's reaction to the infection, um, just caused them not to be able to breathe and yeah 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 know. they had a. Uh, 
pulmonary issues, breathing right. issues. They're very sick. Right. But the thing is, everyone was affected differently by it. Yeah, that's, and that's one of the things that's so unusual about coronavirus is why, why was there such a variety of, of effects? I mean, some people are, have the long COVID. They're still still have effects with like it. Like taste buds and yeah. smell. Yeah, yeah. Um, and other people, you know, didn't even know they were sick, didn't even know they had the virus. And um, Those people have good antibodies. Yeah. 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 But uh, is that very unusual for a virus? Or is it like, because uh, it seems like it's it's random. I mean, I'm sure it's not random. It's not, it's not magic. I'm sure there's <laughs> the science, if we, if we study it for a couple right. more years, they'll be like, oh, this is what happened. Right. But it right, just happened right. so suddenly, so fast that people were just like kind of thrown off by it. Right, and there's a there's a factor of fear too that kind of like scared people. Sure, yeah, sure, there was. sure. Yeah, I think there. Yeah, we just don't know enough yet. We don't know. We enough probably yet. would understand um, why. Now, um, I've studied done in my career. I've also studied polio virus, and um, I, I, I've I've stu- I study the structure of the viruses. I don't really deal much with the with the the dise- the, okay. vi- the disease, and. And but but in my the reading that I've done about polio, for example, there was some similar idea, some of some something similar there. So like I can talk to my parents and 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 and, and people who who where polio was really a, a a problem when they were young. Yeah. I mean they would they they would talk about how all of a sudden someday you know Sally in their class or or uh, somebody else in the class wasn't there and they had woken up in that morning with a stiff neck and been taken to the hospital because they had polio. And, I mean, it was just random. You just had no idea who would who would get polio next. And it was so frightening um, to, to people, you know, um, before polio vaccine became available. So it kind of a similar idea. Okay. And, um, and there, it, um, polio is actually an intestinal virus. It infects intestine. There's cells in the intestine, but, but they're... In some people, it was able to get into the nervous system and par- and kill kill nerve cells, which cause paralysis. And yeah. and and uh, yeah, and paralysis it could be maybe your arm was paralyzed or your leg, or some people their lungs. And I think there's still a few people alive today who are in iron lungs uh, uh-huh. who had polio as, uh, when they were young. But 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 yeah, that was another thing. So maybe it's not so strange that that okay. some viruses are. Um, are, can cause different effects, and and I don't think we ever understood completely. We don't, we don't know really how, why some people would get poli- paralytic polio, and other people again, probably major- the majority of people who got polio actually it was a harmless infection. It was a harmless. Uh, yeah. That's what I think. If it's the inside of them, that's probably you get diarrhea, yeah. and then like yeah. for a couple of days you flush it out. Yeah, maybe diarrhea, or or maybe you don't even know you're sick. Yeah, yeah. So. but uh, what's that one condition where you have uh, holes in your intestine? Um, anyways, that could be a factor. Because there's a disease where you start, where you're really unhealthy and you eat crap, and you start developing holes in your intestines. Hmm. Maybe it just leaked out. Hmm. I'm just no, it, no. Up. It seems no. to have gone through. The, the, I think that's a little bit more understood. What happened? I think that somehow it can travel th- from the intestine through some some cells, actually through cells, I believe, into into, and eventually end up in a muscle cell uh, or or a nerve cell. Some somehow. Okay. So, so yeah. Here's a here's a childhood curiosity question. <laughs> Um, can you manufacture viruses that cause zombies, like zombie outbreaks and things like that? Is that even remotely possible? Well, I mean, science fiction, yes. It's science, uh, well, science, I mean, I watch a lot fiction. of movies, but yeah. like in reality, like because you're like right there on foundation, like create and like you know you're working with viruses. Is that even like remotely possible? Well, I mean, I guess I guess some people would say I I I, I hate to say it's not possible, but yeah, okay, but, okay, but it's highly improbable. Highly improbable. Right. It's highly improbable to right. create zombies. Right. Okay, wow, right, man. I mean, uh, I mean, there there's been the accusation, right, that that the coronavirus. Um, what came out of a lab? But we uh, don't know that in China. We don't know uh, for sure. That's not been proven That's a, uh, yeah, beyond yeah. reasonable doubt. I don't think. But um, the, I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. there's always these accusations that that may, maybe people could try to to select and again th- maybe through evolution, an evolutionary process, try to try to make really malicious viruses. Yeah, yeah. Um, Got it. And and hopefully we have uh, people who would. Who would counter, uh, that, right. counter that or 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 um, notify their right authorities that something like that was going on that, yeah. th- uh, to prevent that from being a, and a problem. Got it. So let's just say so there was a virus that was with malicious intent. How far can you be? Like, what's a safe zone? 
Well, it depends on the virus. It does. Damn, yeah. You were going to say that. <laughs> yeah, it depends on the virus. So, yeah, viruses, one thing that's really interesting about viruses is they're, they're often all very different. Yeah. You when know, you showed me pictures, I was like, wait, they're all very different from yeah. each other. Yeah. 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 yeah they're, they're, they're and they're very affected very differently too, right? Sorry? And they're affected differently. Like if you if you splash it with different chemicals, they're affected differently. Yeah, they can be. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Um, uh, for example, the common cold viruses uh, cannot stand being in your stomach. So if you swallowed a, a, a common cold viruses, there's a group of viruses called rhinoviruses. Okay. And um, they're very similar, very closely related to polio. Okay. But if you... If you swallow them and, and get them in your stomach, they're destroyed by the acid in your stomach. Whereas polio can survive that, can survive the acid in your stomach and gets into your intestines and affects you. Whereas, so, so yes, yes, yeah. Okay. They can it. be. They can be. It comes in, depends. Okay. Yeah, so it depends, depends on what virus. Some of them have to, you have to touch them. Some of them need to be in a proximity of 10 feet and you might get it. That's right. Right. And so, so I think that was one thing that was, we all learned. I think one of the, one of the, Nice things, uh, if there is a nice thing about the pandemic, is that we got a nice biology lesson in virus, virology. And, and we got to spend more time with our families, too. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's very important. Yeah, yeah, sure. Sure, absolutely. But, but you know, we got a, a nice lesson. I mean, the, the masks wearing and, and you know, the, the idea before, before this, you know, you would, you would be um, around people. You could be around people. But even as close as you and I are now— um, you know, that if we weren't wearing masks during the pandemic, we could have gotten each other sick, right? That's the thought. That's that, the thought behind it. Yeah, yeah, that, 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 that it was the little particles that come out of your breath that, that could make you sick. Okay, so. but that's not true. They've proven that not to be true? No, or? that is true. Oh, that is true. That is true. Okay, so, yeah, that so that true. six feet thing was actually accurate. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Okay. yeah, that was helpful. That was that helpful, was helpful in preventing infections, and the masks were in pe- were, were helpful in, in preventing infections. Um, of course, the vaccine was very helpful and 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 more helpful. Um, but but yeah, I mean, we learned things like that. Whereas before, we didn't worry. We didn't wear masks. It, it, it we didn't wear masks before, like we did in mm-hmm. in the pandemic when it was when we were really worried about it. Um, yeah. So do you think people? Uh, build immune to it or it's just like everyone kind of got it in a sense or we don't even know it's still it's still in the no i think yeah i think we've all i think there's been a, a probably most people now are immune to it in one okay, way or another it. either either from the vaccine or from from me actually getting it or okay. both both or probably yeah because yeah. yeah. i didn't get sick or maybe if i did it was like half a day uh-huh. But, but did you did you have the did you get test positive for it? I never tested for it. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. I never. I was just like, okay, you know what? I just like positive yeah. mindset. Eat healthy. Get sunlight. All that crazy stuff they didn't tell you in yeah. the news. You know that you're supposed to be doing. Eat yeah. more vegetables. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I did, and I just wrote it out, and I was just I'm fine. Okay. Yeah, I'm totally yeah. fine. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, just have yeah. A positive. So you, yeah, maybe you were one of the people that that was actually infected, but but was asymptomatic. So and that Possibly. gave you some immunity. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I still was careful. I didn't want to like infect anyone, you know. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Got it. Um, so that's just one thing I was curious about. Yeah. Okay. So it comes in all shapes and sizes. Um, and on the last note, what do you think people could do just to just to better themselves? Just maybe keep themselves healthier, uh, get less, I guess, bad viruses. I don't want to say viruses in general because there's some good ones too. What's some advice you could give people? I mean, I know we have the CDC for that, but uh, maybe from you. Well, I think my I, I guess my advice that I would give people is live a healthy lifestyle. I mean, there there really is something. I I've been happier when I uh, when I started exercising again yeah. and and uh, exercising and um, eating healthily. It really changed my life. I I didn't for a while and it really helped me. I I would add too. I think a, having a spiritual dimension of some kind yeah, in your life is one hundred percent is is very valuable. Um, uh, and, and makes, and makes you happy and it's made me happy. And so I guess those three things, you know, try to, and, and feed your mind. There's so many wonderful and, and, and spend time helping other people. I, I, I think those things, um, learn new things, learn something new. There's good in the world. There is good in the world. Yeah, Do, there's a lot of good yeah, in the world. A lot Most of, people a lot are of good. world. Yeah. Good. And, um, and there's so many wonderful things. Uh, I love science. It's it's so exciting. There's so many cool things. I mean, we've had the, we have a new space telescope out in, uh, you know, the James Webb Space Telescope. We have that. We the have Hubble, Hubble, Hubble Telescope. Right in my city, Pasadena. Yeah. Yeah. So, 
there's just so many wonderful things that we're learning and, and we're learning about um, life, life on earth and uh, our bodies. Um, there's so many wonderful things to learn. So feed your mind, uh, feed, your, feed your spiritual side, uh, serve other people, help other people, um, take good care of yourself. Those things have helped me be happy. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So that'll keep you healthy, happy and also prevent you from... I guess getting more sick. Probably, yeah, yeah. yeah there definitely. seems, yeah, there, there's, 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 there's good evidence, that, yeah, good evidence that that uh, keeping yourself healthy, keeping yourself um, happy, um, even I think beliefs, uh, there's spiritual keep keeping your spiritual self, yeah, well is also all good. And show good. gratitude when you wake up in the morning. That's right. You're actually be breathing. grateful. Yeah, be yeah, grateful. Be grateful. Be grateful. Right Absolutely. On. That's a great way to end it. Thank you very much. Thanks again for coming on. I know you're very busy. Ladies and gentlemen, since you liked this episode, go ahead and subscribe, and we'll catch you next time. Thank you.